Welcome to the introduction video on Excel tables for data entry. We use Excel tables extensively in all the templates and in Zara.com, and hence it's recommended that we understand how Excel tables work before we use any of these templates. The topics we'll be covering in this video are what is a table, why do we need them, what are the different components that we need to be aware of, and what are the basic data entry operations that we will be doing with tables, and five essential tips that would help us avoid some of the mistakes that we could make with Excel tables. Now, an Excel table is nothing but a rectangular data set, which means that it can have one or more rows and one or more columns. And we can see a couple of example tables here. So the first one on the left is a simple one column multiple row table. The one on the right is four different columns and multiple rows. And when we make a data set, a table, then Excel activates a lot of useful features, and that's why we do it. The reason for using Excel tables are it helps us store information in an organized way, and that makes it easy to retrieve information when we need from that. And we use the information in the tables as source for calculations in other sheets in the workbook. And these are the main reasons why we use tables. Now, what are the different components in a table? So when you see a table like this, we can see that the top row is the header row, and that represents the names of the different columns in that table. And columns are also referred sometimes as fields. The second important component is the data rows. This is the area which is all these rows from row three to row nine, which has the information or the rows of information in this table. In this case, it's a product table where we have the attributes of each of the product, and we have the name, description, category, and inventory information, and each row represents a different product. And so this set of cells is called the data. The data can be text type of information, or it can be numeric or numbers, or it can be dates, for example. We could also enter formulas, which will help us calculate things. So these are all the different types of data that can be in the data rows. The third important component is the design. So not all the tables look alike. So when you see another table, it may look slightly different. So it's important to understand that the tables can, the appearance of the tables can vary. And this depends on what style is chosen. And there are many different preset styles available in Excel, as you can see here. And some of the principles that we follow in Inzara.com are we make sure that the top row or the header row is clearly visible with a different color and the border. The last row is clearly noticeable with the thick line border. And the banded rows approach where you can see the gray and white alternating colors and this helps to read the data across easily when we have lots of columns. The last thing is we, when we have calculated columns, we use the green colored header label to identify calculated columns so that the user can be clearly aware of which columns are calculated columns so that we don't edit the formulas by mistake. There are three key operations that we would do as a user in handling with Excel tables. The first is to enter the row, second is to insert a row of data, third is the deleting the row. And we will, go, we will now go into Excel and do a live demo of how to do these three operations in the best practice way. So now I have Excel open and here is a simple empty table. So usually when you open a template, this is what it will look like. You will have a table with no data in it. And so the first thing, how to enter data. Make sure that you enter the data from the first row following the header row. So this is the header row here where we have the names of the columns and then immediate next row, please start entering from here. This is very important. So I'm going to type a product name like this and I'm gonna put a numeric number for purchase price and I'm done. So I have now entered a new row of data. Now, if I want to enter the another row of data, then all I would do is to put my cell uh, cursor in cell A4, which is the immediately following row after the first row of data that we have already entered. So I am going to type here the second 
product information and I'm going to put the purchase price. So this is how I would enter the data. It is very important that you begin from the first row following the header. Second operation that we're going to study is the inserting operation. Let's say I want to insert a row in between these two rows of data. What I can do is to, I'm going to right click on cell A4, right click, choose insert table rows above. This is how I can insert a row above any specific row of information. And then I am going, I can type here any other product and I can type this. So this is how you would insert a row. This, these are the recommended methods of inserting. Please do not use any other way of inserting data. And the third operation is to delete. So let's say I, want, I made a mistake and I want to delete this row. Then I can do is to click delete table rows and that'll delete. The insert and the delete, I also want to show that you don't have to do one row at a time, you can do multiple rows. For example, let's say I want to delete these two rows of data. I can select these two. You don't even have to select the entire row. You can just select just one column cells. Here I've selected A4 and A5 together using my mouse. Right click, delete rows. Now both those rows completely will be removed and this is very important that we follow this method because this approach will only impact what's in the table and any other information here will not be impacted. So this is why this is recommended. Now, if I want to insert again, I can insert. And if I want to answer, insert two rows, I select two rows, insert, and now it'll insert two. So if you want to do five, you can do five. It's very easy to insert and delete rows of information from your table. Now, if you want to undo any of the operations that we have done, all we can do is to do Control Z and that will undo any of the operations that we have done to our table. So now let's look at the five tips that we want to follow to avoid making mistakes with Excel tables. The first one is ensure that the data that you have entered is inside the table. So how would I know that the data that I've entered is inside the table? So there are many ways, but this is my recommended way. Click on any cell and if you're worried about, hey, is this cell inside my table or not? When you click the cell, look for the table tools ribbon that appears. And if I'm clicking outside my table, you can see that the table tools design ribbon does not appear. So this is the easy and clear way of knowing whether your data is inside the table. Okay, now let's say you are inside the table and if you want to know how big is my table, what is the um, what is the boundary of my table, then press Control A and Excel will select all the data inside the table and it will clearly identify to you what is the boundary of the table. Now, tip number two, when, when we are pasting data from any sheet or any other workbook, uh, for example, you already may have a list of products somewhere else and let's say I have it here, I have just three rows and I'm going to copy and I want to paste it into my table in this template. And the recommended approach is definitely if I want to paste from here, let's say I want to do it paste special values. So this is the recommended method of pasting values. If I do that, I'm going to paste my values and it will not bring in any of the other information such as if I have any formulas here, if I have any weird formatting here, none of that will be carried over to my table, which is very important. You want to make sure that you only bring the values and nothing else from your external sources. Number three, always avoid blank rows in your table. For example, if I have these two tables, these two rows are blank, which means it doesn't add any value to me. Make sure that you delete those rows and never have any blank rows in your table. Tip number four, if there are calculated um, columns in your table, for example, let's say this is a calculated column and I'm gonna put something like this. So this is a calculation. And whenever you have calculated columns in our templates, we format it with the green color header so that it's clear and we also have descriptions around it which will help you understand that it's a calculator column. Please make sure that you do not edit the formula inside these calculated columns. It will help ensure the accuracy of the calculation. So make sure that we don't edit 
the calculated columns. The last tip, please do not try to rename any of the columns that have predefined information. In our templates, we make sure that we provide what we call as custom fields, um, which are highlighted and said, these are custom fields you can rename, but other fields, please do not rename them because some of the templates use pivot tables, um, which is another Excel feature, uh, which will break if you rename an existing field. So if you really need to rename an existing field and if you're worried about the impact, please reach out to me and I will do my best to help. But renaming the existing fields may break some calculations, so please avoid them when you can. So these are the five essential tips and please follow them to avoid any mistakes when using tables in our Excel templates. If you have any other questions about Excel tables or any of the templates, please reach out to me and I'll be very happy to respond. Thank you very much for watching this video.